Yo, Elliot, you talk about being still and calm when you aren't sure what path to take, both physically and mentally. This has helped me eliminate distractions and take action in investing in my future. Good. Can you speak on the difference between the lessons of thou shalt stop and thou shalt defy? Perhaps I should stop listening to my own BS and defy other people's uh, BS. Okay. So let me uh, sort of give a little bit of a recap of what those two lessons are about now. So those of you guys who are new, you know, there are 12 lessons in this program or 12 commandments, at least there are several lessons. Uh, and each one is a commandment of sorts, right? So I use thou shalt, I'm just kind of having fun. But essentially, you know, they're like, like rules for life. I think Jordan Peterson has a, has a book called that. Thou shalt stop essentially is about allowing your mind to be still. It's another way to say meditation, right? And so when we break it down into the quadrated psyche, right? We know that as a, as a man, there's four aspects to our being essentially, right? I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but we could either be thinking, feeling, doing or being right and so the, this was uh discovered by or propounded by carl jung uh the psychoanalyst of the early uh, 21st century and, or 20th century does that make sense 20th so he, he he supposed he proposed that there are these four aspects of our psyche that makes us quadrated, right? So there's the, there's the cross, right? And the man has these four quadrants, thinking, feeling, being, and doing. Robert Moore, who is a neo-Jungian, basically a student of Carl Jung, broke it down or, or, or used mythological language in order to describe those four aspects. And he called it king, warrior, magician, lover, right? And so if we matched up, if we superimpose king, warrior, and magician, lover, those, that mythological language upon Carl Jung's scientific assertion that the psyche is quadrated, you get the thinking quality, right? Which is your magician, right? The magician is sometimes very intellectual, very spiritual, very mindful, right? He's working in his mind. Uh, you've got your feeling quality, right? Your feeling quality is the lover quality, right? Your, your ability to appreciate, your ability to love, your ability to feel. And then you have your, your warrior quality, which is associated with action, doing things. It's very physical in that way as well. And then there's the being quality. The being quality is the king quality, and it seems to be that it is the most mystical of the three, but of the four. But when, you, when it really boils down to it, it is the aspect of, of executive function, right? Receiving inspiration, direction, guidance, revelation from above, right? The executive, the executive branch, right, is the top branch. And according to, according to Robert Moore and Carl Jung, this is, this is what is represented by the, by the crown or the halo, and if you notice, look at, I have these new icons up here. See Jesus, he's got a halo around his head. He's got a halo around his head. Joseph, a halo. Mary, they all have halos. They have halos around their heads, right? It is that, and that's indicative of the executive function and access to God the Father. So you know how Jesus says that I don't do anything Everything that I do and say is of my father. Jesus is totally tapped into his king consciousness when he does that. He's tapped into the human executive function, but it's open to revelation, guidance, and so forth from God the Father. So it's like our antenna, right? If you could just imagine the thinking aspect is in here. Feeling aspect is in here. Doing aspect is here. But the king, the being aspect is up here. It's sort of a conduit, if you will, right? And I'm kind of like going between physical and metaphysical, and I'm just ranting a little bit here. But to give you some sort of a, a, a view of what stopping our thinking, 
feeling, and doing does. When we stop our incessant thinking, right, with the magician quality, right, which if these three lower qualities aren't subject to the executive function, you've got a divided house, if you will. So we tend to think. We tend to think a lot. We have a, we have a cramp in the brain in our culture where people think that we can think ourselves out of every problem, right? And so one of the things that you hear in the Bible, I think Jesus even says is that, you know, not to rely on your own thinking. Don't rely not on your own wisdom. I think David says that in one of his songs. He says, rely not on your own wisdom. In other words, you're not going to think your way out of this problem. And a lot of times where we've got a problem and like, I got to fix this problem. So I'm going to think my way out of it. I'm going to weigh all these options. I'm going to get more uh more resources, I'm going to read more books, I'm going to ask more people, I'm just going to like try to scour the world and wrestle in my mind in order to solve this problem. And in essence, what is being said in that passage is sometimes you're, you can't figure things out. You ever hear, I think Einstein says that uh, you can't fix a problem at the level of which it was created, and most of our problems are created in here. So it's like you're trying to fix the problem with the place that the problem began. And that happens quite a bit, right? And this is why I tell you guys, stay calm, stay still, both physically and mentally when you're, when you're not sure what to do. It means it's probably not in your head. Your brain is like a storage uh, unit and it can only store so many things. And so like, you know, you're, you're trying to put more things into the storage unit or even better, like the cauldron and you're trying to like, mix up that stew and maybe you'll come up with something it, it, it's it many times it is self-defeating it's uh it's uh how you would say it's when you get diminishing returns on something right it's like diminishing returns like the more you do it the more you burn yourself out the less capable you are of actually figuring out what you need to figure out so you gotta stop your brain that's the first stop with thou shalt stop there's three other stops that need to, that there's three stops, two others that need to be taken in order for the executive function to at least be free for that halo, right? For that, for that revelation, for that guidance from God, right? A lot of times we want to hear God, right? Like we're like, I don't hear God telling me stuff, right? Why isn't God talking to me? And you know, I don't think it happens audibly, right? Maybe to some people like Abraham. It doesn't happen audibly, but if you're ever wondering, like, why God isn't revealing something to me? Why is God not leading me in the right way? Why is God, God not hearing me? It's usually because we're so busy thinking. You got to stop. Also, with the feeling quality. Now, this is, we've, we've moved, I think, from excessive thinking in our culture, right, which was probably, probably brought about through the enlightenment or probably even before, but like this, this rationalizing everything, that everything needs to be rationalized. But I think that's even starting to wane, right? I mean, the West was built on rational thought, right? And so there's some, some benefit to it there. But I even think that's beginning to wane and people are becoming addicted to emotionalism. Emotionalism seems to be the predominant demonic force of the day. Feelings is what people make all their judgments are. Feelings is, it doesn't matter what the facts are, right? You can give people all the facts in the world. You, they even feel about science. Do you notice how strange it is with science? Science is no longer science. Science is a form of scientism. It's a religion because it's not about facts. It's about faith, right? People have faith in Fauci, for example, right? Faith in Fauci, but if you actually look at the facts, by the way, there's a, a really good new book called The Real Anthony Fauci by Robert F. Kennedy on Amazon, which if you're really interested in facts, you might want to read, but people who are not interested in facts aren't going to read that because with, with emotions, we end up choosing evidence to support our emotion. So it's like you can give somebody facts, but they're like, well, those facts don't match up with my emotion, my feelings about it, so I'm going to ignore those facts completely. So we've, we've placed feelings even over facts, right? And you can see how it's sort of a hierarchy, right? Like this is higher than this, this is higher than this, and then this, you know, and then, the, and then, there's, then there's a whole take action culture, right? And so 
Taking action becomes another cramp. It becomes another addiction. Too much thinking, too much feeling, but then too much taking action. It's almost like a form of ADD. Like you can't sit still. Like you can't not do something. You ever get that sense that like, I can't just not do something, right? Well, it's, that's pathological. Like if you have to constantly be wrapped up in activity, it means generally that you're operating out of a, a state of fear. I often give the, the difference between action and activity. True action comes from what? Stillness. It comes from stopping, right? If you really want to know what to do, don't do anything and it'll be revealed to you. Then you're actually taking action. But if you're thinking and you're feeling and you're, you're doing stuff, I'm trying my best through your will, well, then you're, you're not. You're not, uh, you're not operating out of love you're operating out of fear and you're not actually taking action you're steeped in activity and that's that's what i wanted you to understand about these three these are called the three lower bodies three lower qualities the three lower qualities i even think aquinas talks about this he talks about like the different appetites concupiscence or something like that right there's these there's this intellectual appetite there's this emotional appetite there's these volitional appetite in fact he even goes on to say that those are those are forms of effeminacy he says that thinking, uh, being attached to thinking, too much thinking is a form of intellectual effeminacy, right? He says that emotional effeminacy and volitional effeminacy, these are all forms of effeminacy because they're tied to sensation. They're actually tied to our lower nature. They're beneath us as men, right? And so the higher of these qualities is the, is the stillness. It's the being, Quality and the way that you one, let me put it this way, one backdoor approach to allowing yourself to operate from the from the father, from the realm of the father is don't trust your own thoughts, don't trust your own feelings, don't be having to do something all the time. So that in a long way, I guess I'm just getting warmed up, in a long way, a long-winded way, to say that's what it means to stop. To stop is not just to is to not do something. It is also, uh, it, it's also, a, in a way, a doing, right? You could do stopping. <laughs> I often say you can't do stopping, so I'm starting to contradict myself. But like you, looking at it from the negative perspective to see the positive, let me put it that way, because it's so mystical. It's like, well, what do you mean stop? Am I going to do anything? How do I get anywhere, right? It's not about... It's not about not doing anything, not thinking anything, not feeling anything. It's about having a rightly ordered thinking, feeling, doing, and being, right? Putting the king on top, right? Putting God the Father first, right? Putting the crown first, right? Even in, you know, like yoga and, and, and Hindu tradition, they recognize this through how the body operates, right? The body and the mind kind of operate as one, right? And that's why they call this the crown, right? The crown chakra. In a way, right? It doesn't make me a bad Christian. I don't know. But in a way, what's being depicted in these icons is Jesus tapping into, accessing his crown chakra, right? His, his crown. This is, this is what the crown means. The crown with its points, right? Have you ever seen this? The crown with the points, right? The crown with the points points up. It points up to God. It's pointing up and it almost acts like an antenna, right? Like a, like a physical representation of the metaphysical antenna that allows us to draw down or better yet open up to guidance from God the Father. And so if we want to be led in our lives rather than being anxious and depressed and frustrated in our lives, we got to stop. We got to stop. We got to stop sometimes. So when you say you want to know the difference between stopping and defying, now we got to move on to defy. To stop is to just is to turn off the thinking, turn off the feeling, turn off the incessant doing, and allow yourself to be led, allow it to be revealed to you. It's very, very, very powerful, yet very, very frustrating because of our addiction to effeminacy. We're, we're, I'm there too with you guys. When I use these terms and I'm being derogatory, trust me, I'm not pointing fingers, right? I say if you point fingers, look at the three that are pointing back at you. <laughs> I got a lot of fingers pointing at me. Y'all, people on YouTube point at me too. I'm not perfect. And if I'm exposed for my ill perfection, well, then that's what is meant to be, right? Because I, I am not Jesus. I'm not perfect. I'm trying my best, though. And I ask God to forgive me where I fail. So the second aspect of your question is thou shalt defy. And defiance is a uniquely masculine 
quality, according to some of my research. It's uniquely masculine to say, no, you can't cross this boundary. Here's my boundary. It shall not be crossed. And you do that with other people, but mainly we got to start doing it with ourselves. When we say defy, we essentially are saying, I'm going to defy my lower nature. No, I'm not going to have that extra cookie. No, I'm not going to have that extra bottle of wine. No, I'm not going to have that cigarette or no, I'm not going to watch porn. You see what I'm saying? So the first act of defiance is against our own fallen nature and the demons that seek to derail us, right? You get whisperings in the air. I get whisperings in my ear all the time, dude. I don't even know where they come from sometimes. I'm like, that's not a helpful thought. And so it's, it's less about stopping, right? Stopping the thought. It's more about recognizing it and saying, no, mm -mm, nope, I ain't gonna do it. So we start on the inside with myself. I'm gonna deny myself, defy and deny. I'm gonna defy and I'm gonna deny. But then it's about other people and other uh, uh, you know, situations outside of us where we get an opportunity to say, no, no, no. Basically saying no. No, I will not. No, I, I will not comply, right? I mean, today we're really being asked to make a decision about who we owe our allegiance to, right? Like, do you owe your allegiance to Fauci, right? Or to God the Father and his word in the Bible, which kind of warns against what Fauci's doing to us right now. And a lot of people, they just can't defy. And look, I don't, I, take it, I don't take it for granted that I live in Florida and that I live in the United States and I live in a place where this tyranny is not being exacted upon me, it's not being pressed on me, and I, I, I just have to thank God, it's the grace of God, 100%. I didn't know what I was doing when I moved here. I didn't realize that 2020 was going to become prison planet. Um, so I recognize just how difficult it is, speaking with you guys, it is to say no, to say no. You will be persecuted if you say no, and that's the whole thing that... It, it, that's what makes having faith so important because if you have faith only in your flesh and you have faith only in the lords of this world, money in this world, the material of this world, then there's no reason to defy. But if you have, a, if you have faith that I am not this flesh, I am not this body, you can take my, you could beat my body, you could whip my body, you could, you could starve my body, but you cannot steal my soul. You will not get my soul. That requires a tremendous amount of faith. That requires, uh, that requires a, a, a special kind of faith that I don't think most of us have. I don't know if, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what I would do. Again, I say that I'm blessed to live where I am, but if faced with some of the things you guys are being faced with, I would like to think that I would continue to defy. I, I'd like to think that I'd be willing to suffer and sacrifice as our Lord did, but... I'm not called to that challenge just yet. I'm pretty sure it's coming. You guys are. Many of you guys are, especially you guys in Australia. Wow, it's crazy. But defiance, defiance. I would say that a part of the reason why this tyranny is unfolding on the planet is because men have stopped being men. And how do you know that men are not being men anymore? Because we don't defy. We don't say no. We don't stand up and fight back like, like the revolutionaries of the American colonies, right? The American Revolutionary War. Those were men that were like, ah, uh -uh, nope, no more, no, right? And they, I, from what I understand, it was only 3% of the population. That's why they call them three percenters, right? The guys that are into that today, they call them three percenters because in 1776, only 3% of the population. That means 97% of people were like 97% of the people today. Who's going to be a part of that 3%? I will tell you this. It will be mostly men. There will be women that will, that will follow their men. There will be women that trust their men. There, there will be women that uh, are, are, are very happy that they've got strong men, strong alpha male men that are doing what they have to do in order to stop the tyranny. But it will be men. That's why I say it's a, a uniquely masculine quality. It's up to men to say no, right? Adam should have said no. When, when the serpent came to the garden and began to seduce his wife, Adam should have been like, whoa, 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 get the heck out of here. Get out of here. You don't belong here. He wasn't protecting his wife. 
Think about our life today. Think about how many of us are not protecting our wives, not protecting our families. I was watching, a, I listened to a, I think it was a meme, sorry. It was a meme on Instagram, I saw it today, that said, your children are going to ask you, why didn't you say no? Something to that effect. It was like, the children of the future are, are, are like our children, right? Like my children. My children aren't going to ask me because I said no. But adults today who are like just following along with the dictates, the mandates, and the oppression, uh, they do have an opportunity to say no. Some places, I think Australia is starting that, um, starting to have the prisons now. They call them like, you know, quarantine camps or whatever. But the, the rest of us, right? Our children, once they find out what this is really all about, are going to be like, Dad, why didn't you say no? Right? And it, the buck always stops with the dad, too. So why didn't Daddy defy? Why didn't Dad say no? Why didn't Dad step up? Why didn't Dad look a little bit deeper into this? Now that we're all sterile, <laughs> right? And, uh, and this global genocide has unfolded, begun to unfold. So anyway, that's a little rant on that. So your question is, perhaps I should stop listening to my own bullshit. Well, listening to your own thoughts, that's really what it is. It's a matter of not trusting your own thoughts, not trusting your own feelings, not trusting your ability to do anything, but for it all to be revealed and unfolded for you. I know it sounds crazy, especially to a faithless generation, but I couldn't sit here and speak this way if I haven't experienced it in my own life. I don't say this because I've read the Bible. I don't say this because it's religious tradition. I don't say this because it's a new age idea about law of attraction. I say this because, holy cow, I've seen it in my life. I've seen it. I've got, I have enough years under my belt to say, oh, okay, I get that. That's what's happening right there. Better that I stop. It also says, and defy other people's bullshit. Well, you have that right. I think you understand it. It took 20 minutes to, to explain something that I think you already understand. You say defiance is about other people. Yeah, stopping is more about you. Defying has to do with our lower nature as well, just like, you know, the th thoughts, feelings, and, and doings. But um, one is a bit more internal, one's a bit more external. So I hope that uh, helps answer your question, bro. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.